let's look at Newton's universal law of gravitation. So we've already looked at gravitational force. Um, we call it the weight, and we have an equation for it. Fg is equal to mg, where g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Um, and this has worked great for us, right? Why do we need anything else? Well, the reason why we need something else is that this is a limited equation. Uh, it only works for the gravitational force when the object is near the surface of the Earth. Now, we can also extend it. If the object were on the moon's surface, then we can use the same equation, but just change g to equal 1.6 meters per second squared down. Or if we go to Mars, then we just change g to be 3.7 meters per second squared down. And if we're on the International Space Station in orbit, then we change g to equal 8.7 meters per second squared downward. But it's not a complete equation. It doesn't tell us the gravitational force anywhere in the universe. Um, so Newton's universal law of gravitation is important because it is universal. Before Newton, people had kind of an idea that the universe was split into two big parts. There was the part on the Earth, and then there was the part in what they would call the heavens out in space. Uh, they said, or they thought, that there were two sets of laws. There was laws on Earth, and laws up above. The big deal about Newton's universal law of gravitation is it showed that it's actually the same law on the surface of the Earth, and it's the same law on the surface of the Moon, on the surface of Mars, in between all of these places. Uh, if you go to the Sun, it's the same gravitational force. Newton's universal law of gravitation works everywhere. Um, it's a general idea. So let's look at it. You sacrifice a little, uh, a little bit of simplicity, however. So I'm going to write down the equation. Um, it looks a little intimidating at first. Um, you can see that it has a capital G in it. It has two masses. It has an R. So let's think about this. Um, and the equation can also be written in slightly different styles. So I'll write it down in a couple different ways. But they all mean the same thing. In each equation, capital G is known as the gravitational constant. Uh, when I was learning physics, my physics teacher called it Big Daddy G. And that's because it's a universal constant. It's the same constant everywhere in the universe. Um, it's a weird number. It's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared, which is a mouthful. Um, but the benefit is you never have to change it. Uh, Capital M is, it represents the mass that's feeling the force. The mass that the force acts on. The other M represents the mass that's causing the force on the other object. And then R represents the distance between the centers of the objects. And if you use that equation, the force that you get is the gravitational force on capital M. And that force will always be attractive. This equation doesn't tell you that. This equation just gives you the magnitude. The way that you can figure out the direction of the force is you know that it's always an attractive force. Okay. Um, so another weird thing about Newton's universal law of gravitation is it doesn't require objects to be in contact. Keep in mind, this is a gravitational force which does not require contact between the two objects. The Earth does not have to be in contact with the Sun for it to exert a force on the Sun. It's a good thing too. I'm glad that the Earth is not in contact with the Sun. Um, same with the Earth and the Moon, or the Sun in the center of the Milky Way. The gravitational force does not require contact. Um, so how does it work? Don't worry about it right now. We'll talk about that later. Uh, the big point is, is that this gravitational force equation, Newton's universal law of gravitation, it works. And it works to predict the orbits of many different things out in space, pretty much everything out in space. Um, so it's very powerful. Let's apply it. So Mars. Mars has two moons. One of them is Phobos. So let's find the gravitational force on Phobos by Mars. And I'll give you some information. The distance between the center of Phobos and the center of Mars is 9.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, uh, The mass of Phobos is 1.07 times 10 to the 16 kilograms. Mass of Mars is 6.42 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. 
using that information, we can determine the gravitational force on Phobos. We got to put it into the equation. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of exponents. Um, but if you're careful, you can calculate the gravitational force. And it's 5.21 times 10 to the 15 newtons. And remember, it's always an attractive force. So that force on Phobos is toward Mars. Okay. Uh, let's look at a slightly different example. Let's look at the Earth and the Sun. Let's find the gravitational force that's on the Earth by the Sun. So we need the masses of the two. Okay, let's write those down. And the distance between the Earth and the Sun is 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters. And with that information, we can find the gravitational force on the Earth by the Sun. And remember, the equation gives us the magnitude. The direction is given because it's an attractive force. If I have one piece of advice for you when you're doing these calculations, it's be careful with the exponents. The exponents are often the reason why people make errors in this kind of a question. Um, if you're uncomfortable with entering exponents into your calculator, uh, look up online. Usually there are very helpful YouTube videos that show you how to do it. Um, if you don't remember uh, how you did it in chemistry, you might want to review your chemistry notes, or if you've done it in another math class, it might be helpful to look at those notes as well.